Shocking. The iconic Christ, the Redeemer statue in Rio de Janeiro, is struck by lightning more than once yearly. But what if one strike caused something unbelievable to happen? So let's explore the possibilities of a divine event that could change the world as we are going to know inside this video. A striking event occurred in Rio de Janeiro as a lightning bolt hit the 100 foot tall statue of Jesus Christ during a flash storm that rocked the Brazilian coast on Friday. The lightning struck the statue's head, creating an incredible sight of a divine figure. Photographer Fernando Braga captured the breathtaking view and shared it on Instagram, where it quickly went viral. The Christ the Redeemer statue is a well-known icon of Rio de Janeiro and a symbol of love and perseverance for many cultures worldwide. At more than 2,000 feet above Rio, it is the largest representation of Jesus in the world and has been struck by lightning multiple times. Despite being made of 700 tons of reinforced concrete, the statue's enduring popularity continues to make it a target for lightning strikes. So what does lightning mean and signify in the Bible? Lightning is a powerful and awe-inspiring force of nature that evokes fear and amazement. Its sudden and intense strikes during the thunderstorms can be deadly, and yet the majesty of a thunderstorm can be mesmerizing with its booming sounds and vivid colors. In the Bible, lightning takes on a symbolic meaning, representing the power and presence of God that causes people to tremble in reverence. It also shows God's judgment against his enemies and Satan's downfall. Lightning will also be a dramatic sign of Jesus' second coming seen by all. Some verses that explore the symbolic meanings of lightning include Exodus chapter 19 verse 16 through 19 and Psalm chapter 77 verse 18 for God's presence, Psalm chapter 144 verse 3 and Psalm chapter 18 verse 14 for God's judgment and Luke chapter 10 verse 18 and Matthew chapter 24 verse 27 for Satan's fall and Jesus' second coming. Respectively, lightning remains a fascinating and complex symbol in both nature and the Bible. It has God's presence. In Exodus chapter 19 verse 11, God reveals his desire to manifest himself to all of his people, not just a select few. He demonstrates this by revealing his immediate power and might, clearly and unambiguously. The Lord states on the third day, he will descend upon Mount Sinai before the eyes of all the people. So how does God fulfill his promises of a grand and public revelation? He does so with breathtaking thunder and lightning, fire and smoke, and a deafening trumpet blast, as recounted in Exodus chapter 19 verse 16. On the morning of the third day, the mountain was enveloped in a thick cloud, punctuated by lightning strikes and accompanied by the blaring of a trumpet. The awe-inspiring display could not be missed by anyone present, causing even the brightest stalwart of the Israelites to tremble in fear and reverence for God's unmatched power. This was no mere display of thunder and lightning. This was an unmistakable proclamation of God's majestic presence, which could not be ignored or explained away. Moreover, the Bible clarifies that this is but one way in which God announces his epic presence to humanity often with a display of overwhelming power and might that leaves no doubt in the minds of those who witness it. Also, lightning is a poetic expression of God's presence and power. The Bible also employs the symbolic use of lightning to convey the swiftness of God's power, his mighty presence and his sovereign will over all of his creation. In Job chapter 37, verse 3, it is written that God unleashes his lightning across the entire expanse of the heavens, sending it to the farthest reaches of the earth. The psalmist also uses lightning as a symbol of God's illuminating power that causes the earth to tremble in awe and reverence, as recounted in Psalm chapter 97, verse 4. Furthermore, Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 13, portrays lightning as a divine manifestation of God's authority over the forces of nature, with the roaring waters in the heavens and the rising of clouds serving as a backdrop for his display of power. When he sends lightning with the rain and brings forth the wind from his storehouses, it reminds us of his ultimate control over everything. I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Luke chapter 10 verse 18. In Luke chapter 10 verse 17, the disciples returned from their mission and excitedly shared with Jesus how they had seen even powerful demons flee at the mention of his holy name. In response, Jesus said, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Luke chapter 10 verse 18. While there are various interpretations of why Jesus used this particular phrasing in this context, 
Lightning represents God's swift and powerful judgment against Satan's rebellion in heaven. Jesus reveals his divine pre-existence outside his time on earth by declaring that he witnessed Satan's fall. Lightning in the Bible is often associated with God's judgment, particularly his decree against Lucifer. Lightning is God's righteous wrath against his enemies. God is described in the Bible as perfect love and goodness, our Heavenly Father who bestows us the treasures of his mercy and grace. However, it is important to acknowledge that he is the righteous judge of all things and the supreme ruler over everything. Psalm chapter 7 verse 11 Psalm chapter 50 verse 6 Through the Bible, there are instances where God uses lightning both literally and symbolically as a sign of his wrath. In these moments, lightning is often depicted as a weapon against his enemies. Out of the brightness of his presence, lightning bolts blazed forth. The Lord thundered from heaven. The voice of the highest resounded. He shot his arrows and scattered the enemy. With great lightning bolts, he routed them. 2 Samuel chapter 22, verse 13 through 15. Lightning is also used in a prophetic context, such as when Ezekiel prophesied about the Ammonites and their insults, saying, a sword, a sword drawn for the slaughter, polished to consume and to flash like lightning. Ezekiel chapter 21, verse 28. Therefore, lightning in the Bible not only signifies God's presence, but can also reflect his firm judgment against those who rebel against his kingdom. Lightning in the Bible is a sign of Jesus' second coming. Jesus' second coming will not be a meek event. Instead, the Son of God will return in all his heavenly glory, prepared to judge the living and the dead according to the will of his Father. The event will strike suddenly, like lightning, with God's swift and powerful impact visible to the world. As Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24, verse 27, For as lightning that comes from the east is visible even in the west, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. This comparison to lightning highlights the suddenness and unexpectedness of his return, much like how lightning strikes without warning. While there may be signs leading up to Jesus' return, we cannot predict the exact moment when it will occur. As Jesus himself said, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Matthew chapter 24 verse 36 knows when this event will happen. In essence, God uses the symbolism of lightning to convey the sudden and awe-inspiring nature of Jesus' second coming. But what will happen in the immediate aftermath of Jesus' second coming? Jesus gave two important details about what will happen after his return. The first is found in Matthew chapter 24, verse 30, where it is said that the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven, and all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Despite Jesus being the ultimate liberator, most people will view him as a threat because before his second coming, the world will experience frightening and destructive cosmic disturbances. People will fear anything coming from the sky, especially a being who will be introduced by an ear-piercing noise and who will look unlike anything anyone has ever seen before. He will appear as an immensely powerful and radiant spirit being, and some may even think he's an alien invading the earth from outer space. The people on earth won't just mourn or cower in fear at his coming. They will launch a military counterattack against him. The formerly warring armies of the earth will join forces to war against Christ. But this counterattack will fail miserably, as Jesus quickly destroys this army and its leaders. He is coming to liberate and bring peace, but he'll have to fight against those nations first. The second detail Jesus gave is found in Matthew chapter 24 verse 31 where it is said that he will send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they will gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. As Jesus descends to earth, he'll be followed by an army of angels from heaven, responsible for gathering God's faithful saints scattered all over the earth. This gathering will include all of God's faithful people, past and present. They will be caught up with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and this event is known as the Rapture. What do you think of this lightning striker Jesus? Share your thoughts and views in the comments.